Good afternoon and welcome to K24 News Cut this third day of October. My name is Shiksha Arora, joined by our sign language interpreter, Walter. So, and of course, we will be telling you what is making the headlines and taking you to the top story of the day where students at Starehe Girls Centre in Nairobi have been sent home following the outbreak of a yet to be determined disease at the school. Now, the school was this morning shut indefinitely, over 50 students who were quarantined. The affected girls had a high-pitched cough, sneezed and had a low-grade fever. In an earlier statement to newsrooms, the school had said doctors from the Integrated Disease Surveillance Response de de Department, I beg your pardon, had collected samples for analysis at the Kenya Medical Research Institute, Kemri and the Center for Disease Control. We're going to be going to our reporter, Robbie Chacha, who is currently at the school and she now joins us live with more details with regards to this particular story and of course, if there is an update on what the disease actually is, Robbie. Good afternoon, Shiksha. We are still at the Sorehe Girls Centre where parents have started streaming in to take home their children and uh, we are able to understand that the cause of the disease or rather what the disease is is not yet known and so far we are able to understand that about 80 students have been affected by this unknown disease that has led to them coughing in an uncommon manner which is not uh, which has been termed not normal to us and uh, we have been able to understand that uh, for those parents who have come in only the parents of uh, children from form 1 to form 3 will be able to take home the children and uh, in rather in Form 4 will be able to remain since they are yet to sit for exams. So we will be able to continue camping here to understand rather what is happening. And so far from the parents who we have been able to speak to, some of them told us that one of the parents picked their children earlier to take them to hospital and was informed that this is an allergy but not yet confirmed what could be the cause of it. And uh, from, uh, from what we can be able to see is that most of the children are heading home and without the parents knowing what the major cause is and not knowing where to take them from here. Most of the parents fearing not knowing whether the, the, uh, the disease is airborne or it's an allergy as one of the parents stated earlier. So we'll be able to, uh, to inform you if any other information about the disease comes up. But up to now, even as earlier reported, uh, speaking to the health ministry, then there is nothing about that disease that is known. And, uh, been able to be informed that from the children who are affected the disease is getting worse and those who are coughing it is in a way that you cannot understand what it is and uh, most of the parents here have stated that they're not aware where to take their children and they will try to take them to hospital to get to the bottom of what the disease is here so so fast the parents are still coming in and taking their children home and uh, form four students will be able to remain in school to study for their upcoming KCPE exams. We will be able to give you more feedback on what is going on but as of now the parents cannot speak neither can the children speak and the administration of the school also has not been able to give us any information concerning the disease and we have been able to understand that uh, it has been a week now since the, uh, the disease began in this school. Earlier on we had been told that the number was 52 but the number has increased to about 80 or more of the students who are affected and we'll continue uh, maybe to try and talk to the children and understand maybe what they feel, how they feel when coughing, how uh, maybe uh, what led to it being, uh, led to the disease rather and just to get to the bottom of it and uh, just trying to speak to the administration and other parents who are here, uh, parents are telling us that the, the fear of uh, them picking their children is that maybe they could infect other children at home or the surrounding people around them maybe could get infected because no one knows what the cause of the disease is or rather what may lead or rather uh, the intensity of the disease rather. So we'll keep, uh, we'll keep updating you on what is going on but as of now children are going out of the school and as I had said earlier only from one to from three children are being taken home and, uh, and uh, from four students will remain in school until further notice. Back to you Shiksha in studio.
you very much, uh, Robbie Omondi, for that update. Of course, you've heard from her that she says the cause of the disease is yet to be established. The disease name is obviously something that is being looked into. And of course, more details as they emerge will definitely be covered right here in our subsequent bulletins. Now, moving on, the National Government Affirmative Action Fund is targeting to empower the most vulnerable members of pastoral communities through a business and development program. Now, the program, which aims to sustain livelihoods targets to enable women and young girls from disadvantaged families access to basic education. Jasmine Mboy reports. Speaking during a meeting with women groups at Kodich in West Pokot County, the chief executive of the National Government Affirmative Action Fund, Titus Lotte, said the program will address the social economic challenges facing vulnerable groups, including the elderly, women, the youth, and persons living with disabilities through enhanced access to financial resources. Atujaanza kupeana pesa za miaka elfu mbili, kuminatisa elfu mbili, shirini. Kwa sababu, sisi tunania ya kuwakikisha kwamba mambo ambayo raisi ya mesema, lazima itimike. The program has prioritized agriculture and education to ensure the development of marginalized areas. Tunapeana fedha sana sana kuinua biyashara za mifugo, kama vile biyashara za mbuzi, kama vile biyashara za maziwa, kama vile biyashara za kuku, biyashara za ngombe. Na tunaona kwamba vijana wanashikilia biashara hizi kwa haraka sana na inaweza kuwa kwamba wale ambao wameanza kushika hizi biashara pia wameanza kuongea Kiswahili vizuri wameanza kufanya hesabu vizuri Lotes said the initiative is in line with the government's big four agenda to improve the lives of Kenyans and called on the youth and women to take advantage of the specialized funds to venture into the income generating activities Jasmine Ombwe K24 News Cut in other news, ODM leader Raila Odinga has dismissed statements by Deputy President William Ruto promising an upset in the Kibra by-election slated for the 7th of November. Speaking during a meeting to raise funds for the ODM campaigns in Kibra, Odinga dared the Deputy President to try him out in the much-anticipated duel. Ruto had over the weekend, while in Cup Seret, pledged to teach Odinga a lesson in the by-election. K24's Apollo Kamau now reports. ODM party leader Raila Odinga used the Wednesday evening fundraiser for the party's Kibra campaigns to dismiss Deputy President Dr. William Ruto's threats to prepare for an upset in the high-staked mini-election slated for early next month. During the fundraiser, which raised 11.5 million shillings, Odinga told those seeking to bury ODM in Kibra to dare him. Tuko tiyari, tuwambe wa chimbe kaburi kwanza. Alamu tuwane nani ya tangie ndani ya yu kaburi kwanza. Ruto, head on Sunday, while in Caps Red, was in Gishu County, warned of an upset by the Jubilee Party candidate MacDonald Mariga, a lesson he said was for Odinga, who has neglected his backyard for two decades. Jubilee he, tutashinda ile kura ya pale kibra. Hiyo kura ni ya jubilee. Sisi wote tutahamia huko tufanye campaign mpaka tuhakikishe kwamba hiyo kiti inakuja jubilee. Ile muti ya kitendawili alishindwa na mambo ya kibra. Odinga who chaired a parliamentary group meeting on Tuesday at County Hall has asked Nairobi ODM MPs to campaign and deliver victory for the party candidate Imran Okoth amid concerns in the party over President Uhuru Kenyatta's endorsement of Mariga to run in the poll. Hii campaign ni yenu. Hii campaign si yangu. Ni yenu. Sasa. Mimi sasa nimekuwa mzee na kukaa chini na angalia vile campaign inaendelea. Sasa. Sasa ile mkanitaji mtaniambia. Lakini bado. Sasa. 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 ODM. ODM. Ruto on Tuesday said the Kibra contest is not about him and Odinga, despite the by-election having all the markings of a 2022 test run, where the two have been touted as the main contenders. Watu wasikuja wakawachanganya 
ati pale Kibra ati iko mashindano kati ya Raila, Naruto na Musalia sijui na nani. Pale hakuna mashindano ya Ruto na Raila na Kalonzo na hao wengine. Mashindano iko Kibra ni ya Uwi Mariga, Owalo, Okoth na wale wengine. ODM's fundraiser was interestingly held in the same hotel. The deputy president met members of the African Divine Church from Kibra on Tuesday evening, flanked by Malindi MP Aisha Jumwa and Jubilee candidate MacDonald Mariga. The hotel is said to be owned by a former MP. Apul Kamau, K24 Newscat. Right, of course. Now, President Uhuru Kenyatta yesterday officially opened the Nairobi International Trade Fair at the Jamhuri Park Showgrounds. And, of course, this fair is set to last the entire week, uh, Sunday being the last day. And today we are in day four. We're on day four, I beg your pardon, of this particular trade show. And to give us an update on the same, we've got our reporter, Marcy Milanoi, on ground as she tells us what exactly is expected from the trade fair today and what is exciting today, Milanoi. Well, thank you, Shiksha. As you rightly put it, the president opened it yesterday, and today, Deputy President William Bruto is also present uh, for this particular uh, trade fair for 2019. Today we are going to take a look at rabbit farming and of course as you know rabbit meat is said to be one of the cleanest meat. Now to give us more information I'm not joined by Jafeth who is a rabbit farmer. I'm particularly interested in this uh, water system. Yes. Can you just briefly tell us about it? It's an automated water system. It actually reduces work for a farmer and it, it also in, in, enhances cleanliness. Eh? Because the, the, other, the other system will find that uh, uh, the pots will develop molds after some time. But with this one, water is coming straight and then the rabbits know. By instinct, they know how to suck and it's very, they, they find it very enjoyable and very clean. Okay. Yeah. Jeff, if you can just walk around and just tell us about the different types of breeds of rabbits that we have here. Yeah, here we are having like a, 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 a chinchilla. This is an American chinchilla. She's a very good mother. Uh, she has a good mothering ability, she, she converts very fast uh, and she, she also matures very fast. For meat production, this, this breed can come to 4 kilos live weight in 6 months. So we, we, we prefer her or we prefer this breed when you are doing rabbit, especially for meat production. And then here, this is a California white. It is characterized by black ears. The entire body is white with pink eyes. Yeah, she is also a very good mother and she yields a lot of meat. Okay. Our interest, remember, is meat. Yes. Yeah, now here, this is a, a Flemish giant. Eh? Equally like the other ones, as I've said, the, she breeds very fast, she yields a lot of meat, she knows how to care, take good care of the, the kids. Yeah, yeah. And um, mostly, I think one thing that uh, many people don't know about rabbit is the, the skin, the fur. What can it be used for? Actually, we are value adding the skin. You know, we are already we are doing lap, laptop bags. We are doing a number of products like the indoor shoes, uh, carpets, dash box, uh, dash box, and even wallets. So we are value adding. It's not only meat, but we are able even to to harvest skin so that we don't throw it away and maximize the profits on the farmer. Okay. Yes. Well, um, I know I'm supposed to take go back to studio, but. Uh, Shiksha, you have to see how good rabbit meat is and how sweet it is once it is roasted. If you can just have a piece of um, rabbit meat. Apparently, um, rabbit meat is one of the healthiest um, white meat that you can have, especially for those who are really, um, who well, are really cautious. Through, yeah, yeah, yes. cautious and uh, going through, and lifestyle, going through diseases, lifestyle diseases. diseases yeah. Shiksha, that is how rabbit meat looks like. And also for my producers, I think I'm just going to taste on their behalf. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, and see how Very it is. Rich in calcium, yes. rich in protein, rich in full fat. Well, Shiksha, this is our rabbit meat, and of course, uh, we'll be here to keep you more up to date. Back to you, Shiksha. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Mercy Milanoi, for just showing us what rabbit meat looks like. Um, I've never tasted it, so maybe that's something that I could possibly try, courtesy of Mercy Milanoi's report there from the International Trade Fair. Now, moving on, the National Environment Management Authority, NEMA, has closed down a steel manufacturing plant in Isenia, Kajiado County, and arrested three people for floating environmental regulations. Grace Mutango with more on that. 
The National Environmental Management Authority NEMA officials, who were accompanied by police officers, were forced to break into the Imara steel mills after they were denied entry into the premises. <laughs> NEMA head of Inspectorate Sheni Koyet said the farm which is located in the middle of a residential area was closed after every residence lodged complaints over the smoke and a false smell emanating from the plant. We had sent a team from Kajado with the uh, CD Kajado coming here and uh, they uh, noticed some of the issues that were there in their furnace and they told them to know how to, uh, uh, to rectify so that uh, their staff could work uh, efficiently. But uh, unfortunately, they never did that. Shani faulted the company of failing to observe regulations on air quality despite constant warnings from NEMA. They had changed their tactics and they started operating at night. And therefore, we have been doing surveillance and uh, we said that today we are going to come and, uh, and close this factory because of what they have been doing. Three supervisors have so far been arrested. The crackdown will be extended to dozens of steel mill companies in Kitengela and his senior towns. Grace Mtango, Newscut. Now, perpetrators of the outlawed practices in Kajiado have devised new ways of carrying out their activities by using women chamas to secretly marry off the young girls to evade the law enforcement agencies. Security agencies and rescue centers have effectively engaged collaborative approaches with communities and anti-FGM organizations to curb the illegal practices. Chiefs who previously supported the practice have now withdrawn their support in fear of losing their jobs after several people were arrested. Girls who were rescued from undergoing FGM have also joined the campaign to encourage other girls to embrace education. Yeah, ukumbe wanatumia hiyo kukaketa lakini tulikuja tukigundua na hiyo maneno imeisha na tukapata tena challenge nyingine baada ya kugundua kuwa wanafanya hivyo kwa chama ikawa pia kuna tumegundua pia kulikuwa wanafanya lakini ni miaka tatu iliyopita tulikuwa tumegundua walikuwa wanafanya watoto wadogo like nine years below wanafanya wakiwa wadogo kwa sababu watoto hawajua na wanaifanya kisiri All right, now taking you to other stories where Equity Bank yesterday celebrated 35 years of its existence. And now we're going to be bringing to you the celebrations from yesterday and how it went down. It was definitely uh, an event filled with lots of color. Fireworks were a part of that particular celebration. So yes, let's take a look at what happened yesterday with Kimani Gituku. It was all pomp and color as Equity Bank celebrated 35 years of continued support to the socio-economic development of Kenya and the region. When we look back at the journey we have come, we marvel at the goodness of our Lord and the support and confidence of our customers and partners. Equity branches around the country today welcomed all its customers in style promising all the stakeholders the delivery of great customer experience. This exercise, we have done it as a promise and that we are accountable to our customers every day. So for me, as a team leader of Nuthouse branch, is to just tell the customers of this branch and our environs, who, those who come from our environs, whether they come from all over the country, all over the regions that we have our presence, we promise very customer-centric, and good customer service that actually takes care of their needs, takes care of their livelihoods. According to Joseph Jenga, the branch manager at Equity Nuthouse, the bank has also installed new state-of-the-art ATMs that will deliver faster service and reduce the time spent on ATMs. And we are promising you that the next 35 years will be another milestone of solutions that are geared towards our customer uh, uh, needs. Going forward, Equity will present itself as a unified brand with one basket of products and services under one roof, ranging from banking to insurance and investment. Our aim is 
the test that we put in whichever business we want to partner with is a test of solving people's problem and sustainability. And that's why we have started even education arm for customers. Equity Bank now has extensive regional footprint with branches in Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, South Sudan, Rwanda, Congo, Zambia, Mozambique, and Ethiopia. In pursuit of the bank purpose of changing lives and transforming communities, Equity is aiming at opening more banks in other countries in Africa. Kimani Gedhuku, K24 TV. Today, the search for Likoni ferry victims focuses on nine spots as it is day four of this particular retrieval operation that has been ongoing since morning. So for more details on that, we're going to be crossing over to our reporter, Fred Kai, who's going to be giving us uh, the latest from the Likoni ferry channel as he tells us what has been happening since morning. Good afternoon to you, Fred Kai. What is the latest? Shiksha na kama kawaida tuko maeneo ya feri na uh, pale uh, pale asubuhi tuliweza kuarifu kwamba uh, shuli za feri huenda zikasitishwa muda wote lakini kwa sasa mambo ni tofauti kwa sababu kuna mvua ambayo inaendelea kunyesha uh, katika maeneo haya na kwa sababu hiyo basi imeweza tu kusitisha uh, zoezi zima lile la, la kuweza kusaka mili ile pamoja na gari ile kwa maana uh, uh, shuli ile haingeweza kuendeshwa kwa uh, mrwa zaidi kwa sababu ya mvua ambayo inaendelea kunyesha maeneo haya kwa hivyo kwa sasa tu kilichobakia tu uh, ni tunaweza kuona kwa kwa wapiga jimbizi uh, maeneo haya wanaendeleza tu shughuli ile ya kuweza kushika doria lakini uh, kwa sasa shughuli ziko, ziko ziko tu kama kawaida na pale awali tuliweza kuongea tu na msemaji wa serikali bwana Seras Oguna na akasema kwamba wa Kenya basi wanatakiwa wa, wawe na subra kwa maana uh, zoezi hili zima basi linahitaji uma, umakinifu zaidi na vile vile aliweza kusema kwamba endapo familia itaweza kukuwa na ati, ati na pengine waweze kuleta tu uh, washikadao tofauti tofauti ili waweze kusaidiana katika zoezi zima hili basi yeye hata hata hataweza kusita na kuwakaribisha ila tu wataweza tu kuwa chini ya ya, ya kikosi kizima hichi cha wanamaji wa Kenya kwa hivyo zoezi zima kwa sasa tuweza sema kwamba limeweza tu kusitishwa kwa muda kwa sababu ya hali ya anga ambayo inaendelea katika maeneo haya ya Mombasa na vile vile tutaweza tu kukaa maeneo haya endapo basi uh, mvua itaweza kupusa na tu, tuone kama zoezi zima litaweza kuendelea vile vile wataweza tu kutupasha na tuweze kuelezea wananchi yale yanajiri katika zoezi zima hili la kuweza kutafuta miili ya wapendwa hawa wawili pamoja na gari lililozama uh, Jumapili uh, jioni uh, kutoka maeneo haya ya Mombasa naweza kurekebisha kwenu studio Shiksha Fred Kai for that update from Mombasa of course he said that the services have been interrupted obviously because of the rain but we're definitely going to be going back to tell you uh, about the operations that are still going to happen for the rest of the day and as soon as they resume you'll definitely get an update right here on K24 TV. Now moving on President Uhuru Kenyatta has officially appointed Gary Shom Otachi as the chairman of the National Lands Commission and eight other commissioners after the nominations were approved by the National Assembly. Otachi will replace Mohamed Swazuri, who unceremoniously left office following a cloud of corruption cases stemming from compensation of landowners along the standard gauge railway project from Mombasa to Nairobi. Daniel Kuryuki has more on that report. A day after the National Assembly approved the nomination of nine members to the National Land Commission, President Uru Kenyatta has officially approved their appointment to office. In a special gazette notice, the president appointed lawyer Geshom Otachi to serve as chairman of the commission for a non-renewable term of six years beginning October 2nd, 2019. Other commissioners who have been appointed to be members of the commission include former Isilo woman representative Tia Galgalo, former Labour cabinet secretary Kazungu Kambi, former Nyeri Town MP Esther Murugi, former Egerton University Vice Chancellor Professor James Tuitek, Rigna Dokumu, Habi Hussein Al-Haji and Alisa Muremi Mutugi. The new commissioners will take over from the Mohamed Swazuri led team, which vacated office in February this year following the expiry of their constitutional term of six years. Otachi represented former police commissioner Major General retired Mohamed Hussein Ali at the Hague based International Criminal Court. Rejects the nomination of Honorable Tia Galgalo Ali as a <laughs> The appointment was announced a day after members of the National Assembly on Tuesday overturned a House committee 
report that had rejected the nomination of former ICL Women Representative Tia Galgalo on claims of presenting a questionable tax compliance certificate. MP successfully amended the report by the Lands Committee following an amendment introduced by Isiolo North MP Hassan Oda and backed by most women MPs, including those allied to President Uhuru and opposition leader Raila Odinga, arguing KRA had already written to Parliament clearing her on any tax areas. Honorable Tia Galgalo, whom I have a lot of respect for, should have had the opportunity to be able to rectify her documentation. The House, the committee to seek leave and seek an extension of the time for the new evidence that has been adduced, Honorable Speaker, to be considered by the committee, and the committee then tables a report here, Honorable Speaker. When a report or a motion is tabled before this House, it is the prerogative of this plenary on what to do with that motion, Mr. Speaker. They can amend it, they can reject it, they can do anything they want with this report, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, the chairman of Tanka Tanka should not mislead this house, Mr. Speaker. The consensus in this house is that we put that to vote and then we finish and we get back to the main debate, Mr. Speaker. The Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, ESCC, has already written to Parliament seeking the report of the Lands Committee with a view of commencing investigations against Galgalo. The fate of the probe now hangs in the balance following the president's move. Daniel Karioki, K24 News Cut. And that's how we wrap up this edition of K24 News Cut. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Shiksha Arora, joined by the sign language interpreter that is Walter Sewe. And before I go, I'd like to wish all the boyfriends a happy International Boyfriend Day today.